Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to So Custom. Today's video is my top blocks of 2020-2021 and specifically the jacket block. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. So a couple of years ago, I uploaded this video, which was my top six sewing blocks, I think of 2018. So those were the blocks that I had drafted up until that date. Since then though, I've drafted quite a few more blocks and some of which happen to be jacket or coat blocks. So I thought I would pop those all into one video and chat you guys through the process and how I found the drafting, the resources I used in order to draft, and then I would show some examples of garments that I've made, starting from super, super basic and going on to things that I found to be a little bit more complex. So if you follow the process that I followed, I had to start off with the woven block. So for me, this is one that I already had. This is one that's included in that previous video I mentioned. On the front, it has two darts, a bust and a waist dart. On the back, a waist dart and a shoulder dart. I followed the steps laid out in Diane Dazelle's wonderful tutorial to draft this one. And then from here, I couldn't just jump into my jacket block. I had to complete an intermediate step. And that was to draft this block, which is the woven dress block. Again, I followed one of Diane Dazelle's tutorials to draft this block. And this one from waist up is exactly the same as the woven block I've just shown. The only difference here is there's a little bit added on below the waist. So from the waist to the hip, there's a little bit of shaping at the side seams and also an additional dart below the waist. So in terms of time it took me in order to draft this, I would say no more than maybe 20, 30 minutes. As you've got all of that work already done above the waist, it's super straightforward to do that little bit at the bottom. So once I had this block drafted, I was then able to jump into the drafting of my jacket block. I used this book for the drafting. This is Pattern Cutting Made Easy and it's by Gillian Holtman. Those of you that have been here for a while will have heard me talk about this book previously. It's a very beginner friendly little drafting book, but I followed the steps to the letter and ended up with this, which was my woven jacket block. So to draft this one, the basis, as I mentioned, is that dress block. And all that you're doing in the drafting process here is making the neckline a little bigger, making the armholes a little bigger, and overall adding a little bit of width to the perimeter of the block. So if I line these two up side by side or top to bottom, you can see that the drafting process is very minimal. So this again took very little time to do. So although there are a few steps to get to the jacket block, they're not very time consuming and they're not very sort of taxing on the brain either. It's just literally adding extra little bits to a block that you previously had. So this book also lays out how to draft a jacket sleeve. It's not a two piece jacket sleeve, but I did go ahead and draft it. I knew I didn't want to use it straight away, but I thought it would be useful for me to have. And the same thing here again, I used my woven sleeve Again, I talked about this sleeve in that previous video and the only adjustments that need to be made here is that the head needs to be raised slightly and a little bit more width added around the perimeter and within the sleeve itself. So at this stage, I had my woven jacket block and also my very, very basic jacket sleeve. As I said, I didn't want to use this sleeve initially, so I went back to the lovely Diane Dazelle to draft a two-piece sleeve. And the drafting process for this one, I did find a little bit taxing. So it took me a good wee bit of time to get this one right. And the only thing I would say is follow Diane Dazelle's steps to the letter and you can't go wrong. If you deviate from those steps, that's where your problems will arise. So I tried to stick to exactly what she was saying and ended up with my two-piece sleeve that I have used numerous times since and I'm super happy with. So at this stage, I had my woven jacket block, I had that really basic little jacket sleeve and I had my two-piece sleeve. So I felt I was ready to do a little bit of patterning and get stuck into making some jackets. 
So I started with something that was super basic. So this is my little Coco style jacket. I've done a video on how I sew this one up and I think I may also have uploaded how I drafted the pattern for this. It's super straightforward to do in terms of adjustments from the block to this end pattern. All I did was crop off the length. I ignored the darts at the waist. I moved that shoulder dart to the side seam. I've done a video on how I do that. I shall leave that one linked below. I opened up the neck a little bit more. I used my two piece sleeve, as I said, and just made it three quarter length. And then at the back, no darts here at all. This is quite a boxy little jacket. So that was one of the first little jackets I made with these blocks. I was super happy with this. I wore it numerous times, still have it. Haven't worn it much lately, I have to say, but hopefully I'll get it out again this summer coming in. So then from here, I moved on to something that was super complicated for me. Not so much in the drafting, more so on the sewing up, and it was my Chanel style jacket. So for the drafting, all I did here was shorten the length, gave myself princess seams on front and back. I've done a video on how I draft princess seams. I shall leave that one linked below. I've reshaped the neck, but the complexity here came in making my two-piece jacket sleeve a three-piece jacket sleeve. So one of the features of this style of Chanel jacket is a three-piece sleeve. So I followed a fantastic blog post in order to draft this sleeve. Again, just like the previous two-piece, I did find it a bit taxing. It did take me a bit of time, but I just really went slowly through the instructions and bit by bit completed my three-piece sleeve. I made a couple of twelves of this sleeve just to make sure that I had it right. And once I was happy, used it in this final version. I've done a video on how I sewed up this little jacket. I shall leave that linked below. But just like the little crop one from before, I was over the moon with this when it was completed. This entire project for me was quite the challenge, but I was super happy with the outcome. So if I line these two little jackets up side by side, Hopefully you can see that I've used exactly the same block. I've used a couple of different patterning methods and come up with two jackets which look quite different. The boxy fit of the first little crop jacket and then the more fitted Chanel full length three piece sleeve. So from here, I wanted to come up with something that was a little bit longer in length and that was raglan in style. I wanted to add some trench details to it so this is where it was really handy that I had pre-drafted that little basic one-piece jacket sleeve as I used that in combination with my jacket block to come up with my raglan pattern. I used this book in order to draft my raglan. It's more dress pattern designing and it's by Natalie Bray. Again, I've talked about this one in a previous video. This one is way more in depth than that previous book that I mentioned but it still lays out everything step by step. It just goes into a lot more detail. So I followed the steps in this book, as I say, step by step and to the letter and came up with my raglan block. The process of drafting the raglan block isn't too bad. So you have to remove a couple of pieces from your jacket block, shoulder, front and back, and then you add those pieces to the top of your sleeve. But as I say, it's quite well explained in the book. So this was my linen trench style duster coat. I've done a video on how I sewed this one up, but in terms of patterning from the block, I just moved that shoulder dart a little bit towards the center front. And although you can't see it in the pictures, it's underneath those cape pieces. So that's giving me a little bit of shaping on the upper chest. I've ignored the waist darts, lengthened from the hip, and then I've given myself a collar stand and collar. For the patterning on these pieces, I used a combination really of the books that I've just shown, which has all of the steps laid out. And also for the more visual instructions, I followed one of Diane Dizelle's tutorials. And both these pieces are super straightforward to make, very quick to draft. The tricky bit that I found was knowing what size the collar should be. 
So knowing how big I wanted it, how much I wanted it to fall over the shoulder, those types of decisions, not really the drafting decisions. The other thing I've added here is a double breast. Again, this was one of Diane Dazelle's tutorials. I think she was making a coat at the time. I just followed along with her while she was making her coat. And the only difference here is I've rounded off my lapel slightly. I have my raglan sleeve, which I've made two piece. So I've just cut right down the centre of the sleeve and I've added in some of those details that you would see in a typical trench coat. So I've added the cape pieces front and back and to draft these pieces I've taken my pattern for front and back. I've drawn on to the pattern where I want the cape pieces to be and then I've just traced that out onto another bit of paper and that's the drafting complete. The same thing for the patch pockets. And then to add a little bit of additional shaping at the waist, I've just given myself this sort of makeshift belt. And you can see from the pictures that I like this one so much that I actually made two of them. So that was my trench style duster coat. So from here, I moved on to something that was a little bit warmer, less summer appropriate, more sort of spring autumn appropriate. The inspiration for this one was this. So those of you following along on Instagram will have seen this already. But this is just a really basic little raglan style coat. It has collar, little snap fastenings, the raglan sleeve, and then this gorgeous bell shape to the bottom of the sleeve. So this was my version. So for the collar drafting on this one, I followed steps laid out in the Natalie Bray book. So the more dress pattern designing book. And what I will say on this one is I found it really complicated. I couldn't quite get the steps to go into my head at all. I think I drafted this probably four or five times before I felt confident enough to use it on a garment. And I'm not sure whether that was anything to do with how the instructions were laid out or anything like that. I think it was literally just me not being able to get it into my head at that time. Since then, however, I have drafted this type of collar for a few different coats and I've been super happy with them. So I suppose the key to that is a little bit of perseverance. In terms of shaping on this one, there's a little bit of shaping to the upper chest and that comes from that shoulder dart, which I've treated in exactly the same way as I did on the trench coat before. So I've moved the dart a little bit towards the center front and then sewed it up into the neckline. The darts below the waist I've ignored. I've lengthened the pattern given myself those welt pockets, similar snap fasteners on the center front, and then of course that gorgeous detailed sleeve. So I've used the one piece raglan above the bicep, and then below the bicep, I've just belled out the sleeve using the slash and spread method. Again, another technique I've shown in previous videos, but that was really straightforward to do. And when this was finished, I was absolutely over the moon with the end result. So again, hopefully you can see from this picture that starting from the same point, so the raglan block, and using a few really small patterning techniques, you can come up with something that looks very different in end design. So at this stage, I moved away from the raglan block and I had in my head an idea for an anorak. So anoraks that I had seen in shops were typically dartless. So I wanted to draft some sort of jacket block that was dartless. So the lovely Diane Dazelle had a video on the subject. So the starting point for this one is instead of using the woven darted bodice block, I've used my dartless bodice block. So this is the same bodice block, it's just the darts have been distributed around the pattern. Again, this is one of the ones that was included in that original video I did a couple of years ago. I talk about it a little bit more in that video, but for this one, I use this as the basis in order to draft my dartless coat. So the drafting process for this was super straightforward. It took no time at all to complete, and the block itself, not only does it differ in terms of not having darts, but it's also that little bit longer, which was very helpful for me because I wanted to make something along these lines. So this was the inspiration for my anorak. So it's very basic in shape. As I say, it's dartless. It has little cape pieces front and back. Its length is just below the hip. 
It has a hood, a collar, little wrist straps. But the thing I really liked about this one was it had that inverted pleat at the back. So this was my version. In terms of patterning for this one, I've just used that dartless block as is and my two piece sleeve. I've lapped the center front in order to give me a button placket. I've given myself those cape pieces front and back in exactly the same way as I patterned before for that little linen trench. I've drafted my collar and then for the hood, I followed a tutorial on Diane Dazelle's channel. Again, as usual with Diane Dazelle, everything laid out really straightforwardly, quite quick to draft. I added patch pockets rather than the welt pockets. I wanted to give these sort of shaped patch pockets a go. I added those same little cuff pieces and then on the back gave myself that gorgeous detail of that inverted plate. And the plate is really easy to pattern. If you do a quick Google search or a YouTube search, you will find any number of tutorials on the subject. So this one I made just at the end of the summer last year. I did film the process, but I've yet to edit that footage. But the sewing up of this should be coming up on my channel over the next sort of maybe month or so. I underlined the whole inside, including the hood with this gorgeous checked fabric. And I am so over the moon with the outcome of this one. Absolutely love this. So from here, I wanted to move on to something that was a little bit more formal in style. So I was doing a little bit of a search and I found this and I loved everything about this. I loved the length. I loved all of the trench details. I loved the fabric. I loved how fitted it was, all of the findings. So from looking at these pictures, I realized that this coat has a side panel in it. And at this stage, I didn't have any blocks with side panels. So I did a good few searches, both on Google itself and on YouTube. I even looked through some of my books, but I couldn't find anything that transformed your jacket block from standard to side panel jacket block. So I did, however, find a tutorial that had a dress block with a side panel and that was on Diane Dazelle's channel. So I thought what I would do is just instead of using the dress block as the starting point, I would use the jacket block, follow the same instructions and hope for the best, which is exactly what I did. So the drafting process was quite straightforward, really quick to do, probably half an hour, 40 minutes tops. And the benefit of having this side panel is that you can then have more opportunities in order to fit, which is what I really wanted with this coat because I wanted it to be super nicely fitted. So I'm not sure whether that was the right thing to do or not, but it seems to have worked pretty well for me, so I'm super happy with it. So this was what I came up with then. So in terms of drafting on this one, I've started with that side panel block. I've lengthened the whole thing. I've given myself princess seams on both front and back my princess seams ending at the shoulder on both sides. I've given myself that same double breast I gave myself in that previous trench. Just this time, I've added in my buttons, my buttonholes and all of that sort of stuff. I have my collar and collar stand. And then at the back, I've given myself a vent. Now the patterning of the vent, I didn't follow any one specific tutorial on it. I did try to find a tutorial on drafting a vent and I couldn't find one. Diane Dazelle does have a tutorial on, I think it's something like how to sew up a vent, something along those lines, where she shows the pattern pieces. So I just looked at those pictures and tried to come up with my own vent. And I am over the moon with how it turned out. It seems to be pretty correct to me at this stage. I'm sure I'll look back on this video in a couple of years and say, oh God, maybe I should have done something differently. But today, right now, I am super happy with how this has turned out. So that is some of the coats I've made to date using some of the jacket blocks that I have. So hopefully this will explain a little bit of the sort of background process that you have to go through in order to get to your final design. And although I've shown three different jacket blocks in this video, the possibilities with each of these blocks is just endless. You could just draft one block and using a few really small patterning techniques, 
you can come up with something that looks very different in M design. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks.